This is the module 11 video for Statway. In this module, we're back to categorical variables. Now remember, a categorical variable is one that does not have a number associated. Instead, it has a value. Now, what we're going to be looking at here, we're going to be looking at serial colors. And what are we concerned about? The proportion of pieces of the serial that are different colors. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be investigating the claim of a serial manufacturer. So we have a manufacturer that claims the proportion of red pieces is 20%, 0.20. The proportion of blue serial pieces is 0.45. The proportion of white serial pieces is 0.35. We went out and we collected a sample of 1,000 serial pieces. 178 of them are red. 364 of them are white. 458 of them are blue. And we want to know. Is the, manage, is the serial manufacturer's estimates or claims of the proportions correct? So we're going to run a hypothesis test and we're going to have a p-value just as we've been doing in modules 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now, we're going to use something called a chi-square value, which we'll get to in a minute. A chi-square value is a measure of the variability between what we're expecting the counts to be for the serial pieces and what we're actually observing. Now, to run a hypothesis test, this is a chi-square goodness of fit test. This is the one that we're going to spend the most time and the most detail talking about. There were two other chi-square tests that, at least in my class, we sort of gloss over and we don't cover in as much detail because in my class, we set time aside for ANOVA, Analysis of Variance. That is not covered in this video. That is not part of the Carnegie Statway class. But at Pierce College, we do cover ANOVA. Well, in any case, the null hypothesis is always that the proportions are as claimed by the manufacturer. So in this case, the claim is the proportion of red is 0.20, the proportion of blue is 0.45, the proportion of white is 0.35. The alternative hypothesis is very easy. H0 is not true. That will for a hyper a chi-square goodness of fit test that is always your alternative hypothesis now in order to run the hypothesis test we need to come up with a table now we have three categories here the serial pieces can be red white or blue the first line is the observed count that's what's provided to us from the sample the next row is the expected count. Now notice, if you add up 178 plus 364 plus 458, that totals out to be 1,000 serial pieces in the sample. If the manufacturer is correct, if 20% of the pieces are red, 0.20 times 1,000 gives us the 200 right here. That's what we expect to see. For the, for the blue, we're, this manufacturer is claiming 45% of the serial pieces are blue. So if we had 1,000 pieces in the sample, 0.45 times 1,000 gives us 450. And finally, if the manufacturer is correct and 35% of the serial pieces are white, 0.35 times the 1,000 pieces in the sample give us 350. So row two is always the expected count, not what we see from the sample, what we expect to see if the manufacturer's proportions are correct. 
Next, to get row 3, we take row 1 minus row 2. This is the variability or the deviation between what's observed and what's expected. Negative 22 for the red, for the white, 364 minus 350, we have a deviation of 14. And for the blue, 458 minus 450, we have a deviation of 8. The fourth row is always the deviation from the third row squared. Now remember, a negative number, once you square it, is always positive. In your TI, put parentheses around a negative number before you hit the square button. So once you square row 3, you get the values 484, 196, and 64. And finally, we get these little mini chi-square values. You take row 4, divide it by row 2. Always row 4, divided by row 2. So 484 over 200 is the 2.42. 196 divided by 350 is the 0.56. And 64 divided by 450 is the point 142. It's a good um, strategy to always have at least three decimal places, um, three decimal digits. Now, the next thing is we add up these mini values here in row 5. That gives us a chi-square value of 3.122. The 3.122, again, is a measure of the deviation between what we're expecting to see and what we actually saw in the sample. I can tell you that 3.122 is a relatively small chi-square value. Now, in order to run the hypothesis test, the goodness of fit test, the expected counts have to be at least, all of them have to be at least five. Well, these counts are much greater than five. So yes, we can continue with our chi-square test. How do we get the p-value? If you go onto your ti, okay, and we're going to take our ti here, okay, and we're used to running the normal CDF, the TCDF, so let's come here, we'll hit second, vars, Okay, let's go down. We're going to ignore the normal CDF. We're going to ignore the TCDF. We come to option, chi-square CDF. It's a funny looking X. It's a Greek letter. Okay. Now, the lower or the first number is always the chi-square value that we got from the table. There's no such thing as a left tail test for chi-square. There's no such thing as a two tail test. If we're relating it to what we did earlier with the Z distribution and the T distribution, that would be considered a right tail test. So the first number is always the chi-square value that you got by adding up the numbers in row five. The next number is always 1E99. Now, degrees of freedom, the number of categories minus one. We had three categories, red, white, and blue. Three minus one is two. Okay, so we're going to enter these values. And we get a chi-square number, we get a chi-squared CDF number of 0 0.2099. That is the p-value. If we were running this test at a 5.055% significance level, 0 0.2099 is much higher than 0 0.05. So the p-value is high. We must be shy. We do not reject the null. We do not accept the alternative. The alternative was the claim that H0 was not true, that those proportions were not correct. But we're not accepting that claim. We are not accepting the alternative hypothesis here because the p-value was high. Now, one thing I can tell you is if the chi-square value is high, the p-value is low. Okay, now the question is, if the chi-square value is high, why is the p-value low? 
If the chi-square value is high, that means there's a lot of deviation between the expected counts and what we actually observed. Now, if that's the case, that means the, adv the proportions that are advertised by the manufacturer are probably not correct. So we would want to reject the null and accept the alternative. Remember, the alternative hypothesis says H0 is not true, that those proportions are off. How would we reject the null and accept the alternative if the p-value is low? Now, if the chi-square value is low, the p-value is high. If the chi-square value is low, that means that, okay, so if the chi-square value is low, that means there's not a lot of deviation between expected and observed. So therefore, the proportions are probably correct. We don't want to reject the null. We don't want to accept the alternative. How do you not do that? With a high p-value. Now, there are two other tests we're just going to briefly look at. Test for independence. A test for independence would be a situation like this. We want to know we want to know if the row and the column variables are dependent upon each other, if one affects the others. Like for example here, does being a Democrat Republican or other affect how you responded to a film? Now, if they're independent of each other, then your political affiliation would not determine your response to the film. And here, we're not going to run through the hypothesis test, but the null hypothesis would be political affiliation and film response are independent. They're not related to each other. The alternative hypothesis would be political affiliation and response are not independent, that one does depend upon the other. So in summary, we're not going to look at the details if you ran a hypothesis test. If the p-value was low, then the null goes and we accept the alternative, that they are not independent, that the political affiliation and response are related. But if the p-value is high, we do not reject the null, that political affiliation and response, therefore, are independent or at least we're not dismissing that. The final chi-square test is a test for homogeneity. Now, for here's an example. We're looking to see if people consider themselves very knowledgeable, moderately knowledgeable, or having little to no knowledge of science fiction. And we want to know, does it vary across the regions of the country? This is called a test for homogeneity. We want to know does the region of the country have the same proportions of self-reported knowledge for science fiction? So we would run a test. The null hypothesis here would be the description of the population proportions is the same in all of the populations of the country. The alternative hypothesis would be that they're not the same for all regions of the country. So a low p-value, we would reject the null and accept the alternative, that the population proportions are not the same for all regions of the country. If the p-value was high, we would not reject the null. We would not reject the idea that the proportions are the same in all populations across the country.